Hey everybody, this is JD Gaming back today with an opening of the OCG edition of Dark Saviors. This is actually a series in the OCG called Deck Build Pack. And so, in addition to having, you know, the multiple archetypes that we're used to for sets like this, Spirit Warriors and all those types of things, Hidden Summoners, that kind of a set, it also has a handful of reprints that could be used to potentially make decks that fit into these themes. And it's a lot smaller in OCG. You only get in the Korean version. Uh, each pack is five cards. You get 15 packs. Each pack is a dollar though, so that's a pretty solid deal. $15 for a box of this. So yeah, we're gonna go ahead and crack this thing right open for you guys. So reason I held off so long on this is, I don't know if you guys noticed, I don't hate playing meta, but I usually play things that interest me. And when everyone's playing something, it's hard for me to get you know, really into something. It's just, I guess, a personal thing. Um, it's kind of like a reverse hipster type of thing. It's like, if it's already too popular for me, then I'm not dealing with it, you know? Um, I'm gonna open one of these using scissors just so we can kind of maintain the packaging because I like how these things look in design. But yeah, essentially, uh, there's also, like in Yu-Gi-Oh, the risk of things getting hit on the list and such. So unless I have like a really cool idea, I don't go into them, but now that, you know, Thunder Dragons are taking over and stuff, I figured might as well look into them, because I, I did have an idea with Sky Strikers as well. So we have Mad Reloader here, Drowning Mirror Force, so you know, those are some reprints we have. This is a Helmsman, uh, the Helmsman for Hire guy, and um, honestly, I'm not going to know all the names. We have Shark Cannon for the Sky Strikers, and, ooh, a Shatterfoil version of Crimson Knight Vampire Bram, I believe is the name of this guy. But yeah, in this Korean version, and I believe the Japanese version as well, you do get like normal parallel rares or shatter foils or some like special kind of rarity of potentially any card that's not already a foil in the set. So that's kind of a neat little addition they have here. And then uh, tips for OCG packs if you guys open your own. The little ring at the top that you hang packs on is perfect for going and um, I'll put this one over here for going and uh, ripping things open it just makes things a lot easier then this is like the uh, I don't remember this guy beat I believe uh, marksman probably for hire it looks like he has an arrow or something we got um, jamming waves for the sky striker mechas uh, this one I don't know the name of but it's a vampire card it's got a mean scythe and another vampire card in fact it's the same monster featured on there so pretty interesting and then we have super rare this is Training for hire for all your for hire or training needs, something like that. It's like, you know, it's such a ridiculous name that I do kind of remember that. I believe it's training for hire for all your training needs. <sighs> Why did they go and, you know, put the for hire stuff into the text box? I don't know. Like, I feel like it's a bit too much. Like, I feel like Konami should have done that in the article where they introduced it on their strategy site. But I think it's a little, you know, excessive to go into the actual card text in game because it messes with their own mechanics. And then we have Shadow Vampire Knight, I believe this one's called. We got uh, an Eagle Booster. That's a pretty cool common card, different rarity than we get, because everything's not, you know, super secret, like in our version. We got this vampire guy. I always thought he looks pretty neat. It's kind of like a wolf version of Light and Darkness Dragon, um, as long as you don't think of him as a skunk. I believe this is Vampire Desire, which is kind of cool, just because the words look very similar. And we have a Shatterfoil version of the Hercules base. I think I'll probably use this version over any super rare English, just because um, I think it looks really nice. And um, realistically, it's a tech one of anyway, so what ofs. And let me see here. We got Plague Spreader Zombie. I forgot this was in the set, but it makes sense considering it's vampires. Um, this one's Vampire Awakening, I believe. We have uh, the Red Baron himself, which kind of looks like a Doom Caliber Knight, or there was another card that reminds me of him, but he's like some hard to say name, uh, so I won't, you know, try to do that. We have, um, what is this, the Hornet Drones, Mecha Module Hornet Drones, and a super rare Shizuku, and it's a lot cooler having this super rare because it's not a guaranteed super, so very, very nice. And I'll go ahead and do like a quick recap at the end, zoomed in and everything, so you can see and enjoy the cards, you know, because um, I do think that's one of the, my favorite things to do with these openings, is to you know, just go and enjoy the artwork on these things. And let's see, we got, uh, maybe this one was beat. No, this is 
beats. So what's the other one I passed earlier? I have no clue. We have jamming waves, we got a vampire bat thingamajig, uh, desires, and ultra rare Kagari. Nice. Definitely going to be using that one. Um, it is possible to get a secret rare variant of some of the foils. I believe this the ultra rares can come as secret rare, but I don't know so much about the supers in this particular set, just because it's a different type of a set than uh, what we normally get for core sets in OCG. Then we have um, Armageddon Knight, Monarch Stormforth, we got Wiz, Sage for Hire. It's interesting that this card is a common, even though it's like crazy in duelings and secret rare in TCG. We got another Shark Cannon and uh, Crowbat coming back here uh, as a Shatterfoil. So, not bad so far. I ended up picking up just the Korean Engages and Widow Anchors because I figured those will probably be pretty hard to pull. And I figured, might as well get a box just to see what I can get and, um, yeah, just to see uh, for fun the different rarities that we got. So, let's see. This is not beat. Um, it says Don, Donpa, Donpa. So, yeah, that, that was the one I missed earlier. We got Eagle Booster. We got this vampire dude with a scepter. Um, we got this card. And we got Area Zero. For the Sky Strikers in a very cool Shatterfoil rarity. Like, Shatterfoil is pretty nice. Um, I definitely like it a lot more than Starfoil or Mosaic rare, just because it's a lot more reminiscent of Dual Terminal, you know, and, and that exclusive feel to it is pretty cool. I like how Konami didn't tear at all there. It's like they planned that or something. Just don't destroy the logo. It's got to be stronger than everything else. We got uh, the cha uh, not the ha champion, Hero. This is the Hero. Uh, what is this guy's name? Uh, I don't remember the name, so we'll just skip it. We got Area Zero again, which Fun fact actually has like all these things have their like code numbers in their artwork. So, you know, now you know. We got um, these cards again as before. And wow, a super rare engage. This thing, uh, the only guy that I know of who sells this on eBay right now for the Korean edition sells them for like 36 bucks. It's still like half to a third, depending on the TCG price of the, you know, current prices. Um, Ended up picking up three just because I didn't expect to pull any, but that's really neat that I pulled out. I'll just throw that in my collection. And then we got another one of these vampires, got another Hornet drones, but of course it's limited in all territories right now. We got the wolf guy, we got Pandora, which I guess is Fandora, uh, but in Korean it doesn't say Pandora at all, or Fandora either way, so... Then we got Magical Stone Excavation. This is funny. My brother wanted this uh, just to play around with empty jars, so we'll go ahead and uh, give it to him. It's a nice Shatterfoil version for that. And... Yeah, I still don't know what secret you can get. Typically with this type of a box, you may get one or you may not get any. And our first Ray, even though she's a common, so that's kind of interesting. We got another Magical Stone Excavation. Pull one more and I'll, I'll be all set for him. Um, this is the, I believe this guy's name is Brave. Yeah, it says Bravo. Or no, Bravo is his name. He's like the fighter or something, hunter. We got a Hercules base. And then this doggy uh, comes back to us. His tail looks like a skunk. I don't know. It just looks like that. With kind of like a white stripe and I don't know but a uh, interesting creature nonetheless and especially with Halloween stuff coming up right now at the time of recording I think this is a fitting set to open even though that wasn't the reason we got Armageddon Knight we got Monarch Stormforth we got uh, another copy of Helm and we got Shark Cannon and nice a super rare version of Afterburners and considering that's usually like a one of tech anyway that is Quite nice that I was able to pull that. The guy, you know, he hasn't updated his prices or anything from the time that the set became available. And so if I wanted a Korean version of that, it would cost me like $12, $13. It's like, I'm not paying that when I could pick up a TCG version for like five. Um, but yeah, I, I literally just go with the cheapest versions possible for me between territories because I'm not playing in any events or anything. And since I can read Korean, like, might as well. Got Shiny Stormforth. That looks kind of nice. And we got, what, here, three more packs. I think pretty much we pulled everything we could other than, like, a secret rare. Um, we got Engage. Uh, I suppose we didn't pull Widow Anchor yet, but we did pull one each of Kagari and Shizuku, which is, like, really, really cool. It's, like, what I would want. Um, perhaps if we could get one more of the cover cards, either the Sheridan Vampire Guy or the Champion, that'd be neat. We got our second Ray here. Third Magical Stone Excavation. Nice, nice. Bravo. And uh, we got this Airspace. And it's just a Shatterfoil. So it's, it's at least cool that we get a foil in each pack. In the OCG core sets, you typically don't even get guaranteed a rare. And the reason for that is, especially in uh, Korea, at 
five, uh, 50 cents a pack. You know, you're, you're basically buying, you know, for five cards. It, that's half a pack for 50 cents. It's a pack for a dollar. So it's okay that you don't get a foil in every pack or a rare in every pack because you're pretty much averaging to the same thing here. So then we got some of these guys and all duplicates. And then we got our Widow Anchor. So that's just perfect. That's like one of everything right there. Um, yeah, let, let, let's just open this. Let's savor this Dark Saviors pack and uh, see what we can get. I think in Japan they called this Dark Savers, but if I look at the Korean text on here, it actually says Dark um, Saviors. So Saviors, they actually have that extra turn there, and so it is just like the TCG name. We got Mad Reloader, we got Storm Fourth, we got Wiz Sage for Hire, we got another one of these Shark Cannons, and we got Nice. I think that was an unexpected perfect ending to this opening here to get a, you know, Shatterfoil version of Hornet Drone. So I'll be right back here with a quick recap of what we got in close-up 3, or not 3D, HD, there we go. And of course, my favorite part of the video is always going to be this zoomed-in close-up. So we'll start off with just the foils, honestly. A lot of these are commons, and I don't think you're really missing out on things from that. But here is the stack of shatter foils, starting with Vampire Bram. We got the Hercules base, so that's definitely something I'm going to be using as my one of. We got a copy of this guy. Let me see if I can read it. It says, Vampire's... Sayakma. I don't know what that means, but it's probably minion or something. Uh, would make the most sense to me. We got a copy of Airspace Zero, Area Zero, and that's pretty cool. Got a, out of nowhere, Magical Stone Excavation. And it makes sense considering it does fit into the concept of, you know, discard some spells, retrieve your own spell. I suppose you could use it in Sky Strikers. It's just that it's an inherent minus, so even if you're going engage, you're trading in a lot of uh, advantage for the, I guess, consistency provided by engage, but then you could dead draw it. I don't know. It's, it's, it's an interesting card, I guess, for the set. Um, then we got this guy, and its name is Vampires. See, Kwanzhok, I don't know what that means either. That might mean, maybe the other one is a familiar and this is like a minion. I'm not exactly sure, because uh, I don't use those terms on a daily basis. You know, I know colloquially Korean, that's it. Then we got uh, Monarch Stormforth, which looks quite nice. And it took a while for us to get a foil version of that thing. I remember it got like a text update in like an OTS pack or something, and then it finally got that uh, Ultra Print in Kaiba's collection. We got Vampire, let's see, Grimson. So Grimson or Crimson, uh, the fact that they could have called it Crimson if that were intended makes me think that's not the case, but this still looks really cool in this rarity. And of course, going into our Sky Striker part, now we have a single copy of Hornet Drones in this beautiful Shattered Foil. I just love it. Also, I like how this is like OG, well I guess it's not OG like red and blue Pokemon or anything, but it's like ruby sapphire emerald diamond pearl it's like that type of a box and since those uh ruby was my first game in that series it's kind of interesting just seeing that type of an effect on Yu-Gi-Oh cards i think then we have the foils supers and above and again these aren't guaranteed foils which makes them a lot cooler even if they're the same rarity we got training for hire for all your training needs and i like how they're sparring with wooden swords there but um this was our only non sky striker card which i think is actually a good thing for us considering all the cool stuff we pulled for the sky strikers we pulled a single copy of afterburners which is a very powerful card of course um totally splashable if you've never seen this guy before basically lets you go and destroy a monster on the field if you control no monsters in your main monster zone and then if you happen to have three or more spells in your grave you could go ahead and pop a set spell or trap your opponent has as well or i believe it's a set card it might be a face up let me see it just says uh just kill a spell or trap on the field it says i guess jamming waves is one where it kills a face up card first or set card one of the two and then does the opposite for monster um, but Afterburners doesn't even choose, I suppose. Then we got Widow Anchor, similar condition here, so you gotta have no monsters in your main monster zones to activate, but once you go ahead and do that, you can go and negate the effects of a face-up monster your opponent controls, and if you have three or more spells, you get a bonus unlock effect where you steal that monster in addition. So you do negate the monster's effect, but still be able to take your opponent's link monster, use it as your own, or even just another piece, and, you know, use it for your own benefit is pretty nice. Then we got Stri uh, Sky Striker Mobilize Engage, of course, the really expensive card in the TCG. This thing basically is the rota of the strategy. It lets you add any Sky Striker card from deck to hand, and then its unlock abilities, you draw an additional card, which is really cool because that means one card turns into two. It's the same effective power as Pot of Greed. 
in some cases even more powerful because you're searching your Sky Striker card of your choice. And in other cases, you know, a little weaker because you're not just getting two fresh non Sky Striker cards. But overall, very powerful card, especially when it's reusable thanks to these Link monsters. So here we have Shizuku. Basically, these guys require monsters of the opposite attribute. And as we get more guys, like we got Hayate as a wind monster, we're getting another one that's an earth monster soon. And I wouldn't be surprised if we end up getting um, light and dark way down the line, but I feel like right now they're just going to stick with the four elemental attributes as opposed to light and darkness. Uh, but who knows what's going to happen. Essentially, use a different attribute. And I suppose since, uh, side note, Ray is a dark, they might make a light link monster, but maybe not make a dark one. I don't know. They might make a dark one where you're supposed to stepping stone into another one first. Who knows? End of speculation here. Basically, there are 1500 attack link one monsters that need a Sky Striker monster of a different attribute from the one you're trying to summon. And then Shizuku weakens all your opponent's monsters by 100 points for every spell in your grave. Doesn't have to be Sky Striker cards, just any spells. And then on top of that, it has the ability to, during the end phase of the turn, it was special summoned in any way. So Link Summon or Revived or whatever. You're able to go ahead and take a Sky Striker card spell in your deck um, that's different from the ones that you already have in your graveyard and add it to your hand, which is really cool. And then we also have our ace monster here um ace kagari is going to need a non-fire monster she buffs herself for every spell in your grave by 100 so it's the opposite effect um instead of reducing all your opponent's guys you strengthen your own guy and then um you have the ability to recycle a spell strike or spell striker sky striker spell from your graveyard to your hand with this thing which means you're basically able to go engage directly into ray to turn into this and then you get to go and add engage again back to your hand and engage is not once per turn so you get a double engage play off of this which of course just means so much card advantage and that's why this archetype is so powerful but nowadays you know thunder dragons are taking over dangers taking over in the tcg at least at the opening time of this video i'll probably try to get this one up a bit sooner because again i do have some ideas with sky strikers i'm going to try combining them with some old favorites of mine and maybe i'll come up with some new ideas down the line as well but since ocg you know is still releasing some of these cards i think the archetype will be fine for at least a good chunk of a year so that's going to do it for now guys let me know down below what you think about this set and what do you think about the differences between the original you know official card game version of dark saviors and the deck build pack style um, different rarities different set composition all that stuff versus our tcg because we do have some benefits everything's foil but then you know, i don't know about short printing here i actually feel like this was an exceptionally good box but i don't know just based on you know the one i've seen that's honestly all i've seen just like you guys have but anyhow i'd be interested in hearing your thoughts about the differences in products thanks so much again for watching this is jd gaming hope you guys enjoyed as always and i'll see you guys next time that's the end of this video, but there's plenty more where it came from. I invite you to explore the playlists on screen to see what else I have to offer. And if you really liked what you saw today, consider subscribing to JD Gaming for more Yu-Gi-Oh! videos. Thanks guys, this is JD Gaming, hope you guys enjoyed as always, and I'll see you guys next time.